Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So this video is not a tutorial on our usual subject. Today we will discuss some tips to make your GUI applications good looking and make beautiful user interfaces and create better user experience. So I have this app which I quickly designed and added some functionality. And we will discuss various steps I followed in the process of making this application. Before that, we will first see how it looks so then we can understand how we should implement our application to give the correct user experience. So let's first run the application. So as you can see, this is an image viewer application, although you can't view any other image other than this one because I haven't added the functionality of our app. I just implemented the UI functionality and not the actual functionality of the app. So right now, this is how the app is looking and obviously this app is good looking and has some nice controls too. Let's see what happens when I click on this button. It seems like a button for a menu or something. Okay, so when we click on that button, we get a menu or a sidebar with some additional stuff to work with. Let's see whether we can hide it back. Okay, so now let's work with the image we got. Let's click on this play button and now as you can see there is this progress bar going on which currently doesn't mean anything but still I added it here because I wanted to discuss something related to that later. Okay, let's resize our application. The app is working perfectly although I can't do anything by clicking these other buttons. That's the experience. Now let's talk about the interface. So I have used panels as always to create the different sections of the application. I used a panel as the top bar and then another one as the side bar. Then another one and put its dock as fill while the other two will be top and left respectively. I added a picture box and anchored it to all four sides so that when we resize the form, the picture box will be resized as well. Then I changed the image size mode to zoom so that the image will appear in correct proportions rather than being stretched to fill the entire space. Then I added these buttons and anchored them to the bottom so that they will stay right below my image box whatever happens to the form. I also added another two panels in which one is top to the left inside the other. I will use this as a progress bar which I can later on use to show the progress of something. I could have used the default one from the toolbox, but that would look out of place with these stylized buttons. So I made my own one. Now this play button has some functionality which I will get into in the coding discussion part. I also added some buttons to the sidebar and a button to the top bar as well. These buttons won't do anything but this one will. By clicking this one, the user can toggle the visibility of the sidebar and the rest of the form including the picture box and these buttons will be portioned and resized according to the space available. Since we used a panel to contain these elements and set it to fill as the dot mode. Now you should notice an obvious thing in this app design. I went with a nice color palette with one main color and different shades of it. The color is a very dark grey. Or just black. I added 10s and 5s to the RGB values and made different shades of the same color, as you can see here in the properties panel. This is very important when creating modern GUIs and any other designs in general. Sticking to a color palette is very important so that you can limit yourself from making absurd designs. You will be only allowed to use limited number of colors and hence the design would look more harmonious. Also, it is easier to make color themes later on as well. You can just change the main color and then since you used shades of it, you can change them through the code easily by using variables. Now I want to talk about the buttons. These buttons are not looking like the native buttons on Windows. I have styled them as flat buttons. I set the border size to 1 pixel and changed the border color mouse down color and the mouse over color as well. I personally like the border and hence I put it there. But if you don't like, you can go by your own rules. <laughs> Anyways, if you are using borders, I highly recommend you to stick to a one pixel border to make the border subtle so that it won't distract the user 
and the button would look more polished and hence the whole UI will look better. Also when using colors, here also I used the same concept I mentioned earlier. Stick to different shades and make them subtle but noticeable enough. Don't make flashy buttons, they are simply ugly. Also, you can see I used icons with my buttons. You can easily find icons online or you can just use the Pycon software from Icons 8. This is an amazing tool to have as a designer. You can find lots of icons and you can export them in different sizes and formats as well. And also, this is not a sponsored message. When making something like this, you only need small icons so the free version is enough. Anyways, it is always better to use icons along with text and in some places just icons alone. This helps to make the UI more compact and fit into smaller screens. And also, it makes it easier for the user to find stuff and improves the overall user experience as well. So when adding these icons, I chose the image for each button to its appropriate image and then set the image location as middle center and text alignment as middle right. And then set the image and text relation as image before text. The default settings look weird although you can try different settings for different instances. Okay, now I will talk about the few lines of code behind this because there is not much functionality. I only implemented the UI elements. So for the sidebar, I simply checked whether the sidebar is visible. If it is visible and the user clicks on the button, it should be hidden and if it is already hidden, then it should be visible and that's the simple logic going on in this if condition. Then the other part with some code is our play button and the progress bar. So what I want to do is when the user clicks on the button, it should play the progress bar. And if the user clicks on it again, then it should pause the progress bar. So I used a boolean variable to store this play pause information. If the button was pressed the first time, then it means now the progress bar is not paused. So I will set the boolean pause variable to false. And next time, I want it to be true, meaning that the progress is now paused. So first, I will check whether the progress bar is right now paused. And if it is, then I will play. And hence, paused becomes false. Then in the else condition, paused becomes true. Because now the user clicked on the button again to pause the progress bar. But how exactly is the progress bar played and paused? It is actually very simple. First, I added a timer to the form and named it timer, then changed its interval to 10 to suit the speed I want. I used the timer's tick event and then in there, I will check whether the progress bar's width is actually less than its container's width to avoid expanding it forever. And if it is less, that means we can expand it and hence width incremented. Else we will stop the timer so that the panel will not be expanded anymore. Now in the meantime, since we stopped the timer, this means we paused the progress bar. And hence we change the paused variable's value to true again. Now back in our buttons if conditions, we will start the timer and stop it in each instance appropriately like this. Just to make a visual signal to the user, I will also change the image of the button in the meantime as well. Hence these lines of code. We will set the image of the button using the image.fromFile method and pass the images path as a string. There is one last thing we need to implement. When the progress bar hits the end and the next time we click on the play button, even though it starts the timer, the timer won't have anything to do because the progress bar is already filled up. So we reset it to zero by checking whether it reached the end before doing anything else just like this. Okay, that's it for the coding part. So what are the next steps? How you can use these tips in your applications and improve them further. I have already made videos about animating WinForms, making more forms in one application and exchanging data in between forms. You can combine knowledge from those videos into this one and make the sidebar animated. You can add a settings dialog, 
and then make themes and then send that color theme data into this form and change its color. Also, if you want to make a real image viewer, you can watch the video about an image viewer and improve this application to the next level. After you practiced, you can implement these tips and elements in your applications, whatever the use case might be. I only showed you how to make a custom progress bar, but down the road, you will be able to imagine ways to implement other types of UI elements as well. The core concepts to apply in every modern GUI you make are using color palettes, not making flashy elements, using icons, and designing your own elements if Visual Studio doesn't offer one that suits your need. With these concepts, you can build amazing, good-looking applications fast and without thinking much. So that's it for this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. Also leave a comment if you like these types of videos and also leave suggestions for future videos as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.